So guys, today we're going to be talking about adventure belts and how to find the right belt for bushcrafting, hiking, hunting, and so forth. And I wanted to get on this conversation because actually here in the past I have not been spending that much time talking about adventure belts or really, you know, what is a good belt to wear. But belts can actually be really important to correctly have your setup. And as I'm going to show you guys, there's quite a bit of gear that I carry and quite a few pounds that are actually put on to the su correctly support that weight and still give you an adequate, comfortable feel. So there are some things to consider and I'm going to be going over my personal, how I kind of choose belts that I personally I'm going to go over some pros and cons of different belts such as leather belts versus nylon and webbing belts and just overall what works best for you in your particular situation. So without any further ado, let's look at just some of the gear just so you guys can get an idea of just the type of gear that I carry on my belt uh, before we get into belt options. So let's get into this. This looks a little excessive and admittedly this is not everything. Like I'm not carrying all of this at one time on my belt. But I wanted to show you guys just some of the stuff that I do carry on my belt. So starting off for guns, these are the two primary handguns that I will pretty much always be carrying. One of these two whenever I'm outdoors adventuring. And some of this is also everyday carry. But primarily these are the two handguns that I carry for animal defense nowadays and so here i have a glock 21 fully loaded this thing weighs around two and a half pounds this here is a black ah, ruger blackhawk rather in 41 magnum which also weighs fully loaded around two pounds so both of these are pretty comparable in weight this one might weigh slightly more but basically two pounds two and a half pounds is about how much these handguns weigh alone as for knives this is where things can vary the most. I brought out generally the smallest option. I'll be running for a belt knife, which is the Pull Force Prepper 1, to a medium mid-sized belt knife. This is the Ambush Knives Alpha. And then to some of the larger options I would be carrying, like this Buck Thug. And these range probably the largest in weight. This one is like around 10 ounces. This one's somewhere in between this one and this one. And this one is or just over a pound. I think this one's around 20 ounces, so 16 ounces is a pound. So this is just a bit over. Knife here is just a bit over a pound, and that's providing I'm not running anything else with it. So there's another general pound to this kit. Aside from knives, I also, of course, I'm always carrying, you guys know, the uh, PSK or Personal Survival Kit. This is always being ran on the belt whenever I'm out. And then next to that is generally a Leatherman Surge. So this weighs about another pound, pound and a half. And then this weighs a pound too. This thing actually weighs around 12 ounces. And then there's things like extra magazines that I carry for things like this Glock or I would carry extra rounds for this gun, or I'd be carrying just a handful of other things, things like cell phones, little things that you don't generally think about, but are still taking up weight and taking up space on the pants that I'm actually wearing. There is more than just strictly what you guys see here, but this is for the most part what will on an average day make up my entire carry on the belt and what my belt has to actually support. So in the end, we're talking anywhere from around five to seven pounds ish to, uh, is what my belt has to end up actually supporting if not slightly more than seven pounds but definitely between five to seven pounds is what my belt has to end up supporting again to see with this kind of loadout it does require a specialized belt to actually hold up this much weight not just any old belt will do and there's quite a few even uh, supposed adventure belts that could never hold up this amount of weight or this amount of gear so now let's take a look at so now let's take a quick look at some of the belts that i've chosen and some of the options i run so now let's look at belts and just kind of what i was running now before we get into the belts that i now run i'm going to talk about some of the other belts that i did run and why these don't quite work for these applications. Now keep in mind, for an everyday carry, if you were just carrying a few things and your belt was reasonably pretty light, reasonably pretty light, it actually, you could probably get away with either of these two belts. This is an old Alpenlore belt. 
and this is just a military webbing belt and they're not horrible belts in general for the most part they're pretty good but overall they're just too flexible and they're too too lightweight a material and too bendable when trying to do things pretty much my standard of measure when it comes to belt is that i should be able to sprint at full speed with what i just told you guys like one of these handguns one of these knives the leatherman surge and the psk i should be able to sprint at full speed at least as fast as i can go 100 meters and the belt should not be shifting at all during that running process and that's what's really important to me because because with that test, what I'm doing pretty much is I want to make sure that that belt is securely locked to my waist. And in case I do ever have to run, because there has been one time when I was being chased that I had to actually sprint, not quite with that exact setup, but knowing that I may have to do a full out sprint, uh, I definitely wanted to make sure that in the future my belts could support that type of movement, that speed of movement, and that rigorous type of activity uh, without a problem, with that much weight. And I wanted to make sure that these belts that I got or that I was running were like an anchor for my waist. So these two belts, like I said, were for the most part what I was originally running, and they're not horrible belts, once again, they're just fine, but they're just a little bit, as you can see, there's just a little bit too much flex. When we go over here to one of these belts, and I'll just take a webbing, because obviously we all know this leather belt's gonna be stiff. But you can see with this belt, it doesn't really want to move. Like it will twist, but it does not really want to twist at all. And that's because this is reinforced, double stitched. You guys can see there are two layers of pretty thick about double the thickness of this it's about twice as thick and then it's two of those layers of that and it makes it significantly harder to twist and this is a very very stiff belt as you guys can see like with this belt when it's just sitting here if you put just straight downward pressure it just holds this belt when you put straight downward pressure it doesn't do anything <laughs> So and I put a lot more pressure on this belt. So overall, you'll notice with proper adventure belts, they're just a lot stiffer. Even this one, obviously, practically no flex in it. And any downward pressure is basically nothing. So with proper adventure belts, this one's getting soaked now, but with proper adventure belts like these two, they're going to be very, very stiff. And once again, with my my standard of measure being pretty much that I have to run with around five to seven pounds on the belt uh, without the belt shifting. And so for that, it requires quite a stiff belt and a belt that has a very good securement mechanism. Let's throw these two belts. These are what I would consider probably not what you want for a bushcrafting situation. These are not horrible belts, especially to start off with. And if you're going on like lighter hikes, maybe some hunts, uh, you know, just some lighter activities, everyday carry especially, these two would probably be adequate. But for the most part, for actual real adventuring, those two I would not recommend considering. Now going over two belts I would recommend. A K-L-I-K or click belt and it uses of course you guys probably are familiar with the Cobra uh, belt buckle. I really love Cobra belt buckles and overall I really love this belt. This is a specialized belt by them. You can get thinner ones. I would recommend going for no less than their two millimeter or what they call two millimeter duty belts. That's what this one is. They also have a three mil duty belt that would work even better than this one but the two mil duty belt is the minimum i would recommend from them for actual real adventure belts this one here is made by hanks belts and this is a really thick this is what they call their old world harness and so essentially this is actually a piece of harness leather that you'd use for like tying this is like a strap that you'd use for like tying things down but it's been retrofitted for actually being a belt and so this stuff is like a half inch thick of full grain bull hide so this stuff is very very thick and very stout and so both of these as you could probably tell do a very good job at supporting the weight of all we just talked about so with these two adventuring belts uh, you do want to move on to the right track of having a solid adventure belt. There are some considerations you might want to consider with just overall your choices. As you guys can see here, there's two primary different choices in the fact that you can go leather or all natural or you can go synthetic. And so 
for the most part, I do prefer, as you guys can probably notice by most of my kit, I do prefer to be more of a synthetic person and I fall a little bit more in line with synthetic belts. Not to say that I have anything against this belt. It's a fantastic belt, but generally for the most part, I tend to like synthetic belts just a little bit more. I think they're just more, one, they're more my style. Two, I tend to like their securement mechanisms like this. I've always been a fan of clips on belts, this is not only stronger than a traditional buckle like this, but it's also significantly easier. So, you know, once this is set up on your belt, all you have to do is just that and your belt's locked. So I really like that fast securement method. It's very easy to use. And so that tends to be a little bit more what I like. Another thing I tend to like about um, webbing belts or synthetic belts is one, they're a lot lighter weight. These two are still every bit as stiff as each other, but this thing, you can tell, there's no question that this is significantly lighter. Also, the maintenance on a belt like this is practically nothing. Uh, with a leather belt like this, of course, and once again, I'm not opposed to this. This is just something you should keep in mind. You have to treat these belts. This belt's been treated already out of box with open and I swear by Obanoffs now. I used to use other leather uh, cleaners or preservatives, but I swear Obanoffs Heavy Duty LP is really where it's at with leather protection and preservatives. But you do have to, regardless to what you use, you must you know, use some kind of leather preservative protector, conditioner, whatever you want to call it. You have to use something on your leather belts and pretty much straight out of box, you have to do that. Another thing with leather, because it is a hide, you also have to break it in. This one is still in its break-in process, so it's still a little bit stiff for me and a little uncomfortable. And so that's something that, once again, I like about these belts is because there's really no break-in process with this. It's pretty much good to go right out the box. And so that's another thing I tend to like about synthetic belts as well. Uh, not to just bash on leather belts, because we're gonna get into the advantage of these in a little bit. But for the most part, I tend to side with these belts because once again, they're just more my style, more what I like in a belt. However, once again, there are perfectly good leather belts for carrying everything we just talked about, and this is one of them. So now onto leather belts and their advantages. <laughs> Once again, primarily the the advantage in what you're gonna end up going with is primarily what fits your style and what you like more. And if you do like having a more a belt that's a lot more personal, this thing's gonna show signs of wear. It's also leather, so if you just like leather belts in general and you just they just are your awesome, you know, you just really love that style, then I would recommend a leather belt. With leather belts, so you do have to be careful because just like with many webbing belts, uh, there are a lot of leather belts that will not support the type of gear that we just talked about and the type of rigorous test that I do with these belts. So do make sure that you're either getting something that's dual applied. There are three different ones that I would recommend for leather belts something that's dual applied, which is two pieces of leather sewing together. There's also probably the best option and most expensive, of course, is that you can get a leather belt that has a stainless steel ring on the inside. So it'll be two pieces of leather, but on the inside or sandwiched between those two pieces of leather, there will be a stainless steel ring or a stainless steel kind of like C shape, if you will. And that's probably the absolute best because that will be insanely stiff. Um, that's also the most expensive. I personally try and stay away from those myself just because the stainless steel is a little bit too rigid in my opinion. And then there's just this. This is probably one of the harder ones to find, but this is just straight up. Like I said, this is like half inch thick full grain bull hide and so it's just one piece but it's super thick leather and so if you can find any of these three uh, definitely if you are going for just a one piece of leather make sure that it is a very very thick and stout piece of leather because you want it to be super super stiff when you first get it because like I said with leather there's a break-in process and naturally over time it'll get you know more pliable and so you want to make sure that it starts off almost you know unusably stiff if you will like this one did so 
That is the most important thing to consider with leather is that it is a hide, so it'll grow more supple over time. So make sure you go with something very rigid. Um, but those are the three primary recommendations if you are going for something like a leather belt. So once again, advantages to leather belts are that they are all natural. Uh, nice thing that I really like for bushcrafting with this belt that you cannot do with a belt like this is that you can actually strop your knives with this belt, especially if you have a nice thick heavy duty belt like this, you can chain this to a tree and strop your knives. That's a really nice thing to do. Things that are nice about leather belts, especially as they break in, uh, they become naturally, like I said, more supple and more soft and more pliable, whereas these are always hard and rigid and they have not necessarily sharp edges, but definitely edges that are not the most comfortable. These tend to be very soft and very nice, especially over time, like I said. So there can be some really good advantages to leather. Once you've determined your style and what you want, you know, whether it's leather or nylon, the best thing to do when searching for belts, uh, besides the tips that I already recommended for finding like a leather belt, is primarily what I start off with like in Google searches is just gun belts. Just look for gun belts, whether you want a leather gun belt or you want a nylon gun belt that's what I would recommend typing into Google because the reason why I recommend gun belts is because they're already going to be built more stiff than a normal belt because they're anticipating that you're gonna hang like one of the two guns that we just showed or that I just showed here you're gonna be putting that or hanging that off your belt. So naturally gun belts are going to be very stiff. These two in particular are gun belts. So that it helps explain why they're so stiff and why they're so rigid. Um, so when doing your search, I would recommend pretty much just looking at only gun belts because if you look for dress belts or any other type of belt, you're likely going to get a belt that is not uh, strong enough or rigid enough to hold up, you know, five to seven pounds of gear. So that's what I would recommend for searching one out or trying to find one in the beginning. Another thing you can do is talk to a lot of these places are small businesses. Both of these two are small businesses. So if you do have any questions, I would highly recommend um, emailing the different belt companies and just being like, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to support five to seven pounds reliably, you know, going out into the woods, doing adventures. I want to reliably support this much weight on my belt. What are your recommendations? And so having them help you with that is another thing that I would recommend. If if you don't think you can find solid gun belts or if you're having any questions about a company. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed this nice look at a couple adventure belts and this nice kind of short discussion of adventure belts and how to choose one for yourself. I do apologize, I've never really gone over adventure belts in my videos and I wanted to actually do a dedicated video like this because adventure belts are actually quite important to having a good bushcrafting outing. And once again, belts do carry a lot of essential gear as I've been showing, so I would definitely recommend taking the time to put in some research and find an awesome adventure belt, kind of like these two, or maybe it is one of these two that you want to run, and uh, and try and find an awesome adventure belt because having a stiff belt that supports your gear is really significantly better. And it, I noticed when I transitioned from one of those other two belts, like one of these two belts, over to one of these two belts, the change was significantly noticeable and way better. These two, like I said, they really help support or prop up the guns, the knives, the packs and pouches. And so very important to have a proper belt for adventuring. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. And hopefully you guys like this whole thing. I've been trying to integrate somewhere on this screen. I've been trying to integrate uh, that whole subscribe to our channel. Hopefully you guys like that. And uh, I'm going to be playing around with this new editing software. This is the first video that I actually now am making after the new editing software. So hopefully you guys like this new editing software. And I do want to apologize for the huge break. Or maybe it wasn't huge, but it was like a week-long break of videos. My original computer it just died <laughs> when I was actually processing a video it just blew up pretty much it just destroyed itself so I had to get a new computer and get the files the video files from one computer to another computer and it was just complicated it was a huge mess but 
I'm now onto the new computer and the new editing software. So should be better from now on and the video should be consistent once again. Anyways guys, that's all for now and as always, I'm out.